Hello everyone, welcome to Dear Love Talk. And we are passionate about answering all of your questions. Mm -hmm. Get in touch, send us your questions to questions at lovetalkshow.tv or via our Facebook page. What else is there to say? Let's, Let's go to answer our first... some questions. The yes. first one comes from Amelia and she says, there is this man I work with who is in love with me. Mm -hmm. I also like him, but we never spoke about this. Actually, I only know he loves me by the way he looks at me. But we've never discussed our feelings. I know we are going to be together, but I don't know where to start. Amelia, Amelia, right. Amelia, you are treading on very dangerous ground because you are creating all these assumptions that this person loves you and that this person is uh, smitten with you when he's never actually uh, told you this, right? And uh, it, it's, very, it's very dangerous yeah. to read or not to read, but to make an assumption based on the way someone looks at, at you. Mm -hmm. I, I would even say this is a very, uh, this is a, a very good topic for an actual TV program mm. for us to do because there you have I it. have, yeah, I've come across, and this is real, I've come across specifically one woman that I can remember, but I've heard of many, who came to me saying, I, I simply asked her, so how is it going? And she said, oh yeah, I'm in love. I said, oh, good for you. So who is the person? Well, I've liked him for many years. So we're talking about well, 70, you know, over seven years. And I said, okay, so when are you, when are things moving forward? Mm -hmm. When are you getting married or something? No, we haven't spoken about dating yet or anything. So she, she basically, she was fantasizing in her mind, in her head, that he liked her all along when he never actually said anything, but it was just nice to her. Yeah. So I think you, the first thing you need to do is to take that idea out of your head that he loves you if he's never said that to you. And in order for you not to waste time and waste you know, your time thinking about mm. something that may never happen, go to him and say, listen, I... I really like you. I, I find you a very interesting person. Would you like to go for a coffee sometimes? Would you like to talk? And that's how you how you you go about these things. But mm -hmm. it's if you start creating this idea, this uh, fairy tale in your head, it's gonna hurt. Yeah, and a fairy tale that's never going to happen. It's, it's very dangerous. So I I understand where you're coming from. I think sometimes uh, a look can say a lot, but a look certainly will not tell you that someone loves you. And for the record, someone cannot love you if they haven't even started dating you or spending time with you. You cannot love someone you don't know. I know people say, oh, love at first sight, and, but that, that's, that doesn't exist. It's like you're looking at a, um, a, you know, a jar of Nutella and you never tasted it and you think, you say, oh, I love that. You've never tasted it. Mm -hmm. I had to give the Nutella so, example. Yeah, so be careful. <laughs> Uh, be careful that you do not build this idea of, uh, you know, the person <clears throat> liking you and you building a future together when there is absolutely... You may be surprised that you're going to speak to him and he tells you, actually, I, I, I don't have any feelings for you. Or it may be that he does, but you will never know unless you take a step to say hello and, mm. and you know, is there something there. Yeah, know okay? where you stand. Anyway, second question is um, from a new wife, well, probably recently married. It says, hi both, my husband hardly has any time for me. We have only been married for a short period of time, but he is always busy with work and never takes time to spend with me. He's a good man and he's not spending time doing uh, what is wrong. But I want him to understand that work is not everything and he needs to dedicate time to us. What do I do? Okay, you need to, probably you've done that, but let me make sure you remembered to do this. First of all, you need to assess the situation in different levels. For example, you need to know why is he focusing so much on work? Maybe you will see, you will find that he you just got a mortgage, you just moved into a new house or apartment, you need to put money together so you can buy your first home. So there's a lot of financial pressure on him because he's the provider. Even if you say to him, no, we are in this together, a man is a man, he will always feel like he needs to provide because, you know, I'm a man, I need to make my wife feel safe. 
And so maybe that's what's going on through his mind. Mm -hmm. And he's thinking I'm keeping my wife happy because I am showing her how hard work, uh, uh, how, how hard working I am and that I'm really trying to build a future for us. Because, you know, if there isn't anything else there apart from that, maybe you have a good communication, you, you know, you have a good uh, intimate life, you talk. He just happens to be very busy at work. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying he's right, but you need to see that he, maybe he's just adjusting yeah. to married we, life. I don't we, know. we have to say as well that, you know, ultimately, <clears throat> this thing that has become a problem is actually quality. Okay? The fact that a man is hardworking and by your own admission, he's a good man, mm -hmm. this is a quality. It's just that any quality that is taken overboard becomes a problem, and that may be the case. So, you know, explain to him, and, and usually when we talk about problems in marriage, it all depends on the angle you will approach it. So tell him, look, I, I really love the fact that you're hardworking. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I admire that. So make him feel, when you say that, he's going to feel really special. Right? Yeah, these are important things to say. Exactly. So make him feel special. Say, look, I admire that you're hardworking. I, I, I really love the fact that you, you want to do the best for us. But, you know, our marriage is more important than anything. And if we don't save time to invest in our marriage, then sooner or later we're going to start having problems. Mm -hmm. It's like trying to avoid the unavoidable, right? So if you explain that to him and then come up with... A plan. I think, Elena, it's very important for us to say something because usually a lot of couples, they discuss a problem, but they never come up with a plan mm -hmm. of how to solve that problem. So once you've identified the problem, you've explained it to him, coming from a good angle, then say, look, what if, what if, if we do this? If every Saturday we have date night, yeah. if every Tuesday we have date night, whatever, you can work late this day, but you know, not that day. And if you come up with a practical plan, mm -hmm. you'll be able to overcome that problem. But remember, it depends a lot on how you approach the conversation. Very important, how you approach the conversation. Mm -hmm. What should you not do? Nag at the man until he dies of so much boredom. Nag boredom. until he dies is very, is listen, very powerful. Be listen, careful with the kind do, of do you nagging. know what I mean by that? And you know. I know, I know. It's, it's, Relax. it's just... that wife. It's that wife who is always, you know, like this on her husband. No, there's ways of you doing it, like what he just said. Hashtag nag until he dies. Don't forget to use that hashtag. <laughs> you know, be wise. You know, let him miss you. Let him see, hold on a second, I'm so busy at, with work. Oh, it's true, I'm busy. But hold on, my wife hasn't been nagging at me. What's going on? He's going to want to know, so he's going to turn his attention to you. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? So there has to be a balance. Great stuff. Hashtag <laughs> nag until he dies. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget that one. I think that's Final it for question. Now. Uh, and we're going to get the whip ready for this one. Are we? And this, yes. And this is, uh, comes from someone who chose to remain anonymous. And this person said, I really need your help. I've been married for five years. And although we've always had a good marriage and I love my husband, recently mm -hmm. I started feeling attraction for someone else at work. Consequently, I don't feel attracted to my husband anymore. I don't want to lose my marriage. Please help. Well, the first thing, All right, we're, the whip? First thing we're going to do to help is to get the whip out. Let's go. Three, two, one. That's there it. you have it. Well deserved. Okay, listen, we have to be very... This is a very serious problem. I hope you understand that this is... is it's a very, very, very serious problem. And there are many people in that same situation. Yeah, but here's, here's why. Usually, when you start noticing someone at work, is because something's not right at home. And from what you said, your husband seems like a great man. And maybe, maybe there is something that happened at home. Perhaps you guys didn't feel as close to each other as you should. And then someone pays attention to you at work and you feel special and you start feeling attracted for, for that person. And this is classic. This is a classic example. You know, Many divorces start like this. So here's the thing. You need to answer this question to yourself. What is more important to you? Is it your marriage or is it this person? Is it your marriage or is it this job? And if your marriage is more important, then I would even go as far as saying 
that consider quitting your job. Because if you're going to mm -hmm. stick around close to someone that you feel attracted to and you feel tempted to do something you shouldn't, then you're playing with fire. And yes, you heard me right. It's better that you quit your job mm -hmm. and you keep your marriage because a marriage is very, it's very difficult to build a successful marriage. A job you can get a week later, a month later. So at the moment, you're playing with fire and you allowed yourself to get to this situation. Mm -hmm. We should have allowed more time for this question. And you know something? Because Maybe this we is can a big go one. over it. I hope my producer, mm -hmm. our producer is listening to she is, I know. But you know, I want to talk to those who are on the other end of the, the stick, if I can say so. Let's say that Hashtag you... Hashtag the other end of the stick. <laughs> That's right. Um, imagine, let me talk to those who are, uh, I wouldn't say the victims, you know. You are there going about your business and then this person who is married starts telling you all these things and, and looking at you in a funny way and paying you all these compliments and stuff. You need to go like, hold on a second. You this are, is wrong. You are a married man or a married woman. Who do you think I am? Mm -hmm. Let's say that you decide to play along. Guess what? If you guys end up together, chances are, and I would say 90% chances or more, that he's going to do that same thing again with someone else mm -hmm. and leave you hanging. So there's a lot of things here we should learn from this, this question. And, and this is one of them. I mean, protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if this is too good to be true, oh, he likes me. Protect yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and remember, you, at the moment, you mm -hmm. are playing with fire. The situation exists because you allowed yourself to get to that point. You know, let's just make a final point here for us to finish. When you, when you feel that you are liking something which you shouldn't like, something that's dangerous, what do you tell your children to do? If you tell your, your, your child, you know, is growing up and you, you want to protect him, you want to protect her, you tell her, look, if you ever feel that you're getting close to something you shouldn't, you, you're getting excited about something you shouldn't, then run away, stay away from that. And that's the same thing you need to do. Literally. Understand that you're playing with fire. I know I've said this about 10 times today, but find the thing that is most precious to you, your marriage, because you said you love your husband, and, and sacrifice the one thing that is not as important. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you have a very good chance of saving your marriage. But if you stick around where you are right now, and you continue playing with this fire, eventually you will get burnt. And okay? you will end up with nothing. That's right and regret the whole situation. Yeah, because a person who accepts someone who is married, accepts to enter a deal like this, has no morals. Yeah. The, the, the grass is usually not greener on the other side. Exactly, hashtag that one. Hashtag grass is not greener on the other side. Okay, <laughs> we hope that uh, this part of the program has been helpful. Remember, you can send us your questions to questions at lovetalkshow.tv or via our Facebook account. Uh, you can also choose to remain anonymous. Just leave us a note there that you want to remain anonymous and we won't mention your name. Okay? Definitely. Until next time, bye-bye.